In my previous tutorial on filtering input range data in Google Sheets, we used the filter function. In this tutorial, we are going to use the query function. And throughout the tutorial, I will try and highlight the differences in how it works and which method is best for different scenarios. So let's get cracking. First things first, this will be a sample sheet and you can find a link for this sheet in the description below. All you need to do is go file and make a copy for your very own version of the sheet. Next, open up a new empty Google Sheet and let's get into writing some functions and formulas. Let's run through four examples similar to the previous four examples that we used uh, using the filter function. But first we'll set up our fitters. So let's go into row one and change that to 14. And the first item we want to look at is the total sales for a particular client. So, so let's have a look at Parker and Sons. Let's copy that, control C, and put that over into cell C1 as a reference with control shift and V. Now, next we'll put in our descriptive header and basically that will be the total sales for clients. So total sales, total sales for client. And we'll put a little colon there and a space and hit tab. Cool. So total sales for client Parker and Sons. So previously with the filter function, we had to manually copy and paste in our headers. One of the beauties of query is that we can include the headers in the entire query. The first thing we need is an import range. So let's do that first and then we'll build our query around it. So let's go equals import range. And we need the spreadsheet URL. So that's going to be this sales URL. And I'm just going to select, select everything, but I'm just going to select from here, across it here and hit control C, bring it back over and put it into double inverted commas. And then our next argument is going to be the range string. So what sheet tab and what range are we looking at? So that's for us is going to be sales and it's going to go from A1 all the way to O and we want it to go all the way down. So let's just double click on the sales tab so we can get the spelling correct and we'll put it in double quotation marks again and exclamation mark a one two o o and this is a great way for us to test to see everything's working smoothly first and everything is loading up just dandy okay you can see the the headers have appeared here and we've also got our image and the urls as well just keep that in mind because when we do queries things may change a little bit okay so the first thing so for our query we just want to see parker and son's sales so let's go just to the right of the equal sign and i'll zoom in a bit there we go we'll just go to the right of the equal sign and type in query and the first argument for the query is the data. So the data is being drawn from our input range. Next, we want our query. The query is basically what you're going to ask of the data. And we're going to put that in quotation marks. And the query is going to be, we want to select all. So we can use the wildcard like this, select all, where, where, and next we want the column. So I'm just going to hide this for now. Normally, when you use the query function, you can use the letters as the column identifiers. However, if you're bringing over data from somewhere else or a different location, you can't use the letters. You actually have to use a descriptor like this, col, and then the number of the column. So for us, sure, it's B here. Let's just double check. Yep, it's column B in this one as well. So that's one, two. So it's column two. So col, two. So select all where col2 is equal to, and then we can use single quotation marks here, and we can say Parker and Sons, and close our single quotation marks. And let's just get out of that entire query and hit comma for our final argument. Let's open up the helper here. And the next thing it says is headers. So let's just quickly read that. So the number of header rows at the top of the data. If it's omitted, it'll try and figure it out or set to minus one, it'll try and figure it out. So we know we've got one header in our data row, this one here. So we want to include that. So we're just going to hit type in one here. 
and then we're going to close our brackets and hit enter. Now you can see that we are now clearing Parker and Sons only. Just keep in mind a couple of things. If you have a look at the items now, there is no URL attached to the item. It's just taking the values. And you can see that the image cells didn't retain their data. So if we go back to our sales original tab we're importing from, you can see there's a URL for this one and then there's an image as well attached, but query is not displaying those two items. This is different to using the filter function where it will actually display the URL and the link. So there's one benefit of the filter function. However, if we have a look at our query, we can see that this whole query is much simpler to read. Okay, so let's just bold that. So in our previous tutorial, we use when using the filter function, we just hid certain columns that we didn't want to see. And it's kind of not professional. What a better approach would be is to work inside our function to remove the columns we don't want to look at. So for example, now our image column is virtually redundant. So we need to get rid of that one. So we might want to only display our client number, our company, our company, the item description, the price, the quantity, the total, and the rep, and the rep's name. And we can actually do this inside our query. Let's make a copy of this sheet tab. And we'll just say sheet two. And this will be total sales for client, Parker and Sons, and we want with, and we'll just write this out so we understand, know which ones we want. So we've got a list of columns here. So we want column one, we want column two. We don't want three, four, five, six, or seven. We want column eight. So one, two, and eight. And then we don't want nine because the image isn't being displayed. But then we want from 10 all the way over to 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Okay, so let's just put that back over here. So we are want we want column one, two, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, just as a little visual reference for us. So in this copy we've got our select all and our wildcard is this little star. Now previously we could do the same thing just by simply getting rid of this. If, if, if we're just using the where request it's going to assume that everything uh, that you want everything in there as well. But for us we just want to select certain items. So let's go select call 1 call 2 call 8, call 10, call 11, call, get in the picture, 12, call 13, and call 14, where call 2 is equal to, equal to Parker and Sons. Let's hit tab. Now we can see we only have our selected columns on display now. So let's tidy this up a bit and we'll just select this range from column B over to column H and double click to readjust it. Column E is a bit wide so let's just bring that in a bit. Cool and now we have a nice neat set of data for Parker and Sons by our selected columns. Okay what if we want to order this from the highest total to the lowest total? Well we can add that into our totals as well instead of like when we use the filter function having to also use the sort function. So how do we do this? Let's click back over to our query and jump inside our query after our where statement. And now we can use the order by command. And we want to order by column 12. And, and the next instruction for order by is whether or not it is ascending or descending. And they use a shorthand here. So for descending, it's D-E-S-C. And have a look over in column F now as I hit tab to get out of this or enter. And now you can see in our totals here, we have a higher value at the, our highest value at the top and our lowest value at the bottom. All right, so let's duplicate this again and go into sheet three. Okay, we can also include other queries here. So we're not limited just to looking for one piece of data. So where column two is equal to Parker and Sons. We can also add another piece to our query. And we can join these items by using the AND operation. So let's type in AND. And this time around, and this time around, we want to select our sales person. So for example, uh, I can see 
Stephen Coons has appeared a couple of times here. So let's put his name in there. And that column will be the last column, column 14 in our list. So let's go and col 14 is equal to and single quotations in here and Stephen Coons. Now we are querying and filtering out our data by Parker and Sons as the company and the sales rep Stephen Coons and ordering it by the total sales from highest to lowest. Let's hit enter. And now you can see the two sales made by Stephen Coons for Parker and Sons from the highest value to the lowest value. Okay, so, so now that you have the basics of using query with import range to filter data, in the next tutorial, we're going to create a dashboard where we can look at any of the companies in our list and compare them against our rep name using input range, query, and data validation. It'll be a great way to culminate all our skills that we've learnt over the past few tutorials on input range and filtering. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit that notification button so you know when the next tutorial is released. And if you like this tutorial, please click the like button. Until next time.